In this video, together with the next learning video, uh, we're going to study material that I'm going to group. It can be grouped together and called uh, asset liability uh, management. So you know what I mean by liability, I'm sure. But uh, when I say liability, I mean a future liability. So a payment that you're going to make in the future that you owe. You owe some money in the future. And by asset, I mean future assets, future payments that we're going to be able to buy today uh, and in order to, in a beneficial way, uh, pay the liability later on. So the word beneficial is kind of a, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, not very, it's kind of a vague word. So, uh, you know, that's the difference between this uh, video and the next video is what do I mean by beneficial? Okay, so that, that's the idea between asset liability management is that we buy assets today to, uh, to pay, make payments in the future, make, to make our, our liability payments in the future. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this first technique. It's called uh, dedication and a more descriptive word for it would be exact matching. And so uh, let's start with our, our timeline. And let's say that I have liabilities. I just uh, just randomly put in two liabilities. Of course, there may be more than two liabilities. And the idea with exact matching or dedication, again, is exact matching is uh, more, what you're more likely to see on the exam, the wording you'll see on the exam. It's very descriptive, as you'll see in just a second. But uh, dedication means the same thing. And so the idea behind this is to uh, purchase assets that are going to pay at the exact same times as the liabilities. And this picture is a little bit misleading because in most problems you're going to have a couple of different types of assets, uh, but you still want to purchase the assets that pay at the same times as the liabilities. So I'll put a couple of more assets in the picture there. And then you set up a system of equations to solve where you just add up the amount of assets that you have at each time and you set that equal to the corresponding liability at each of one of those times. So, I mean, it's kind of a simple idea. Um, yeah, it's kind of a simple idea, really. Okay, so let's look at, at a specific example. Let's say that we have a company that has a $95,030 liability due in one year and another $297,330 liability due in two years. The company has the following two types of bonds they can use to exactly match these liabilities. We have bond A is a two-year bond. It's a $1,000 uh, par value or face value bond with 6% annual coupons. And then the second type of bond is a one-year zero coupon bond uh, redeemable at $1,000. And the question is, well, to determine the number of each type of bond the company should buy in order to exactly match the liabilities. All right, so uh, we're going to buy a, a certain number of each type of bond, so let's introduce some variables here. Let's let uh, n be the number of bonds of type, uh, type uh, number of type bond A's, uh, number of bond A's that we purchase, uh, and let m be the number of bonds of type, type bond B that we purchased. Okay, so now let's look at our timeline. Let's start with our liabilities. We have this liability of 95,030 due in one year and this uh, 297,330 due in two years. So I'm gonna start that with the timeline, but let's, rem let's keep in mind that bond A is a uh, two year 6% annual coupon bond and bond B is a one year zero coupon bond. So I'll come back. I just need more room on the slide. So let me, uh, let me get more room and I'll just put in the liabilities at this point. So that's the liabilities that we have at time one and time two. Again, uh, uh, for assets, I have a bond A that's a two-year bond, uh, 1,000 par value with 6% annual coupons. And so for every bond that I bought that looks like bond A, the coupons are going to be 1,000 times 6% or 60. And, the, and then the redemption value is going to be 1,000. That's what it's going to look like. That's what the, uh, the, the bond, the payments would look like when I buy one bond, but I'm going to buy N of these bonds. And so I have 60 N is going to be the amount of total amount of coupons I would get at time one and time two. And 1,000 times N would be the total redemption value because again, I bought N of these bonds. Likewise with bond B, bond B is a one year zero coupon bond redeemable at 1,000. So if I just bought one of those, I'd get 1,000 at time one. That would be the future payment is the 1,000. But I'm going to buy M of these, so I get 1,000 times M is going to be the total amount I receive at time one from the bond Bs, the, from the M bond Bs I bought, buy. 
And so again, this is not very difficult to do. You, you add up the total amount of assets you have at each time, and you set that equal to the corresponding liability. So I'd get an equation that looks like uh, 1,000 M plus 60 N equals the 95,030. And then at time two, I got 1,000 N plus 60 N. Those are common. Those are like terms. When I add those together, I just get 1,060 N, and that would be the 275. 297,330. Solve this system of equations. Very easy to solve this system of equations. N uh, divide both sides by the second equation by 1060. You get N equals 280.5. And M, plug that in for N in the first equation. You get M equals 78.2. I'll leave it to you to, to uh, check my answers there. So that's my answer. Uh, that's the, my answer. I'm going to buy 280.5 of, bond, of the bond A's and 78.2 of the bond B's. Uh, now let me, uh, so let's, let's talk about this a little bit further. Um, uh, if you try to go out and buy, uh, let's talk about bond B for now. If you try to go out and buy 78.2 bonds, 78.2 uh, of those one year zero coupon bonds uh, that are bond B, you're not going to be able to do that. You can buy 78 of them and you can buy 79 of them, but you're not going to be able to buy 78.2 of them. Uh, so that's just not going to happen in real life. However, we're not going to let that keep us from saying that our answer is going to be that you need 78.2 of these bonds. So theoretically, we're going to look a little bit more theoretically than practically. You know, pra as a practical matter, you're not going to be able to buy uh, 78.2 bonds or the 280.5 bond A's. But again, we're not going to let that hold us back. Okay, I have another observation that I want to make, and, and I'm, uh, I'm just going to pick bond A and, and, and deal with bond A with this next observation. Uh, so if I look at bond A, it's a two-year bond. Uh, it's got a 1,000 par value or face value uh, with 6% annual coupons. It doesn't say anything about what the redemption value is, so I assume it's redeemable, redeemable at par. So this is what I have. I've got, uh, I've got a, um, a timeline that looks like that for every bond that I buy, but I bought, I'm, I'm saying I'm buying 280.5 of these bonds, and so I, uh, I get 280.5 times 60 as the redemption, uh, as the coupons, and 1,000 1, times the 280.5 as the redemption value. In total, that's what I would receive after purchasing 280.5 of these bonds. And if you'll do the arithmetic, the 60 times the 280.5 is uh, 16,830. And so those would be my coupons would be 16,830. And then the redemption value is the 280,500. Okay, so now uh, it, let's say that I had another bond that's, uh, and I'm going to call this bond A prime because you'll see it's going to be very similar. Uh, let's say it's a two-year, uh, also a two-year bond, but let's say it has a $280,500 par value with 6% annual coupons, and I just buy one of them. Well, because uh, I'm only buying one of them, the, the, uh, and I look at what the coupon amount would be per bond, it's cap F times R, 280,500 times 0 .06, I get 16,830 as, uh, as my coupon. So with buying just one of these bonds, uh, bond A prime, if I buy one of them, uh, I get, uh, at time one, I'd get a coupon of 16,830. At time two, I get a coupon of 16,830, and I get the redemption value uh, of the 280,500. So if you look at these two timelines, mathematically, what I'm saying is mathematically, there's no difference in buying 280.5 uh, bond A's. The result that you're going to get, the, the, the total amount that you're going to get will be exactly the same. There's no difference between buying 280.5 bond A's or buying one bond A prime. And so this is a technique that's often used in these problems, and I'm going to use this technique later on in, in some future videos where um, instead of assuming that you're, you know, in a more practical way, instead of assuming that you have a 1,000 face value bond, which most bonds are, and you're buying uh, 280.5 of them, you'll just, go, you'll just say, oh, I'm going to buy one bond that has a face amount of 280,500. So mathematically, there's no difference between those two situations. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to be using that technique later on in, in uh, future videos. Uh, just say, let, uh, I'll say something like, well, let capital F be the face amount of the bond, and then just proceed from there. 
Okay, so t generally you can't do that because generally you're not going to be able to uh, choose what you want the face amount of the bond to be. Uh, however, uh, theoretically you can by saying if the face amount of the bond is 1,000 and you want to have the face amount to be 280,500, then you say, well, I'll just buy 280.5 of those $1,000 uh, face value bonds and then I have a bond uh, think of it as a single bond, and I have a single bond with a face value of 280500 Okay, so I hope I didn't confuse you with that. You'll see in future videos how uh, how that's applied. Okay, so that's the, uh, the first type of uh, asset liability uh, management topic, this exact matching or dedication. In the next video, we'll talk about, next learning video, we'll talk about uh, another uh, type of, of asset liability management called immunization. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.